Hi there, this is Alexei Lubomirsky, and today we are looking back to one of my old shoots from 2016. Uh, it was for Harper's Bazaar, and it was starring the wonderful, amazing Reese Witherspoon. I've shot Reese uh, maybe three or four or five times in my career, and she is just uh, an absolute pleasure to shoot. She's super positive, uh, she's so professional, and she knows how to turn it on as well. Like, as soon as she gets on there, she knows, she just, um, she just switches on this, this pizzazz. So as always, uh, when you're doing a shoot of a celebrity, it's usually because they're trying to uh, publicize something as a movie coming out or a clothing line or a fragrance. So on this particular occasion, there were two things coming out. Uh, Reese had just started a clothing line called Draper James, which is in honor of her grandmother. Uh, she'd also just recently started her own female production company, uh, which focused on much more empowering roles for women in movies. As we know now, she's done amazingly with TV shows, movies, etc. Time is up. We see you, we hear you, and we will tell your stories. Thank you. So the inspiration for this shoot were old paintings that you will see right here and here and here and here. Uh, there was a certain romance to it, there was a certain elegance to it and a charm. So Reese lives in Nashville and Draper James started there. So we were headed to Nashville to do the shoot. We were looking for a location that had a certain um, grandeur to it. Grandeur? Grandeur? <laughs> grandeur? 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 Grandeur. <laughs> we were looking for a location that had a certain grandeur to it. And we found this amazing, almost, I would say, castle-like location and beautiful grounds where there was huge uh, stairways with flowers growing over it and vines growing over it. Um, very romantic in feeling. A lot of the clothing was very much in that same vein. So we started off with this shot here. And the reference was this shot here. The, the back terrace of this castle had this beautiful overhanging, um, what do you call that thing? I don't know what you call this, is it a gazebo or a trellis or an archway? but it was just, it gave this beautiful dapple light. We had this amazing dog come in for the day and uh, we set up this, this um, very sort of quaint tea, tea set. There was tea, there was biscuits, there was cookies, there was little cupcakes, there was strawberries. I think the dog tried to eat most of the stuff. Uh, so we had to be shooting very, we had to shoot very quickly. As always with animals, you either get everything ready. So we, I think we actually got Reese ready first and we got her in position, we made the dress look amazing, we made sure her, the, the body shape looked great, and then you bring in the dog and you get the shot as quickly as possible because dogs, they're divas, you know, and they want to get out of there. It was a nice storytelling shot, it was a fun shot. Then we went straight down, continuing the theme of animals, we had this amazing horse uh, brought in, and Reese had this gorgeous, huge dress that sort of draped over the back of it, and again, beautiful backlight, a little bit of bounce in there, uh, the thing with horses, you don't want to scare them, obviously, so you have to be careful with how much bounce your big whiteboards you're putting in front of them. And Reese just basically rode around the garden like this, and I would catch her every time she rode around. And uh, I think I was running backwards a lot of the time. And you get these amazing shots. Now this, uh, we had a reference. For a lot of the images, we try to be as prepared as possible. So we always have reference images for a good starting point for each shot. So we found this amazing image of Jean Shrimpton with this pig, and we wanted to try and get that joy and this sort of very, uh, very cute picture of uh, Reese with this uh, baby pig. Um, so we put her, as you can see, the, the, the background is just incredible. The light that was coming uh, towards this, uh, the back of this castle was beautiful all day long. And the lights dappled through the trees and the leaves and the vines, and it was just gorgeous. So um, we played around with this little piglet, which of course uh, at some times loved being tickled and held, and other times just wanted to get down. So there were lots of amazing outtakes. I even held a pig a few times. Then we moved on to this shot. Uh, there were these amazing stairways uh, in, in the back of this castle location. And um, so we had this beautiful dress with this incredible amount of fabric. And whenever there's, whenever there's a lot of fabric, I'm just trying to see how it moves. Is it going to give something dramatic? Is it better just sort of hanging down? Or is it better giving a big waft of wind and uh, giving it some drama? In this particular instance, I think there was a, wind, there was a lot of wind anyway. So I think we supplemented it with a wind machine. Uh, sometimes also the stylist will jump in and if the wind dies down, the hairdresser is blowing wind into, the, into Reese's hair 
and I'll get the stylist to jump in to just grab the dress and just throw it in the air and you get this amazing, beautiful effect, um, which I think makes more of a magical image. And if you look here, there's a tiny little sort of rainbow effect coming in here. And I think that was really just the, the, the sun hitting my lens in a rather particular way, which gave this beautiful effect. But look at that light. Look at that light. <gasps> Ooh. I wish I could say I did it on purpose, but I did not. The last shot we did on location was this one. Um, and we wanted to get, I think this was ended up being the cover shot, which I think, yes, it, it was. Oh, look, here's one I prepared earlier. Um, so this ended up being the subscriber cover shot. Now, subscriber cover basically is every magazine, every, every Harper's Bazaar, you'll have a newsstand cover and a subscriber's cover. Now, a newsstand cover is the one that you will see in the shops on the shelves, and it's something like this. And so this is a shot we did at the end of the day where it is a cleaner background, cleaner background so they can write all the type on it, all the text about what's in the, this particular issue. Um, now, if you subscribe to a magazine, which means that you pay for 12 issues up front, they will send you an issue and you will get the subscriber cover, which means it's a bit more of an uh, arty cover, let's say, less commercial. And it'll have practically no writing on it, maybe apart from one little bit here, maybe her name, the star's name. And it's usually a much more uh, aesthetically pleasing cover. So that's the benefit of subscribing. So when we did this particular shot, uh, we knew we wanted to get a subscriber cover uh, in. So we set her down in this beautiful chaise long in the garden. The light was already beautiful. It was a very low, soft light uh, at the end of the day. And once she was in position, we just started placing flowers around her. We tried a few different flowers to see what worked. And then we found these beautiful blue flowers. Uh, I think they're called um, peonies. Are they peonies? I'm gonna guess they're peonies. So we found these beautiful blue peonies and basically just try to fill in this corner of the image to give it a really beautiful uh, blue space over here. And I love this shot. It's just, uh, for me, it's like a painting. And then we finish off the day going for the newsstand covers. So this is where we try and get a much cleaner backdrop. So we set up a white backdrop um, in the back garden. The lights had already gone down by now. So this was almost studio lighting, even though it was done outside, it was studio lighting. I think we used like a, a breezy light with a fill and uh, we just tried to get very clean, poppy lighting. Um, whenever you think of a newsstand cover, you want to try and get an, uh, an image or a, an expression which jumps off the shelves. So when you're in that uh, magazine store and you have all these magazines in front of you, you want to be the one that jumps off uh, for people to buy. So the camera we used for this shoot was probably a Canon 5D Mark IV. Um, I started using the Canon a bit more than the Hasselblad recently simply because how fast you can take frame after frame after frame. Uh, the Hasselblad is maybe like, I don't know, a tenth of a second slower, but when I'm trying to get shots like this one on the horse, every split second counts. So I've been using the Canon a lot more. Um, and in terms of lenses, I've probably been using, this was probably uh, 50 to an 85. I can imagine this was probably like a 50 or an 85. Um, for the covers, I probably use an 85 lens. It's a lot more flattering when you're cropping into here. Uh, if you go anything wider, things start to distort a bit. Um, but then sometimes that could be great. It depends on what kind of shoot you're doing. Uh, for this particular one, for Harper's US and for Reese, I went for the 85. So that was it. We had an amazing day. Uh, we got lots of great images. And uh, that is the story of Reese Witherspoon in Harper's Bazaar. Beautiful overhanging, um, what do you call that thing? Uh, moss? Oh, like an ar arch? Yeah, there's a, there's a name for it though. Can you find out what it's called yet? Yeah. A gazebo? Gazebo! Uh, Travis is the closest. What was the one you said before? Like, uh, it seems like archways. <laughs> Alright, ready? <laughs>